Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book from Cambridge University Press, which I think will be of interest to anybody who likes or is forced to like jurisprudence. I actually adore it. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but this is called Lions Under the Throne. It's essays on the history of English public law and it's been written by Stephen Sedley, who will be known to many of you. I've certainly um, had my own share of dealings with him as a judge. Now, this book, um, as I say, is from Cambridge University Press, and Elizabeth uh, and I looked at the book, and we've given it the following title. The modern role of judges revisited with most readable essays on modern public law in a historic context. Now, let's have a look at the book first of all. It's only a little paperback. There it is. It's not difficult to read at all. There is the spine and then there's the back. There's some detail about the book itself uh, and in fact it's £25.99 you can buy it for. It's a paperback. It tells you a little bit about Sedley on the back. Now what you have got it's 290 odd pages. There is a nice um, index. Nice bit of politics in here. All the usual people are in actually included. I'm not going to make too much of a comment about that, but there's a nice little quote at the beginning explaining where Francis Bacon comes in, and I'll mention that again in a minute. There's the front page. And then you've got further quotes from Francis Bacon and more recently Lord Steen. Now we've got a nice little dedication there, and then we've got the uh, two parts of the book and the structure, histories and themes. I'll mention a bit more of that. There are 14 bits in the end, ending with the rule of law. Then there's an index, and then there's a nice preface explaining when um, Lord Justice Sedley retired from the Court of Appeal, and what he then went on to do at Oxford. And then we have the introduction. Um, it says the first part of this chapter sketches the early growth of English public law. Then it sort of goes on, let's say it's got the introduction, and um, right at the beginning it's the histories and then the themes which are developed. Uh, just opening it in the middle, um, there are uh, useful footnotes which you can see mentioned. Um, a lot of the, all the usual cases that you would expect, the controversial ones are mentioned. I'm not going to go into any detail. This looks at secret courts, always a controversial area, and so forth. And right at the end, because I'm going to come back to it, there's a nice little uh, conclusion about the rule of law. Now I like this book very much. Public law is not everybody's cup of tea, certainly as law students, uh, because it does involve politics um, and also of course judicial review is um, a particular area of interest, uh, one that I've certainly had a lot of uh, interesting uh, clients involved with uh, that particular area of law is very up and down and of course the issue really is the development of public law and of course in my view this book of course it's worth itself when it comes to those reading jurisprudence and having to look at legal theory because there's quite a lot in the book itself where we've got the mix of the, the political decision making or the, the challenges to the political um, areas of law uh, which overlap with, with the more traditional areas of, of what we know as basic substantive law such as land law, trust, company law and so forth. Now that having said all of that, this book is very important for one reason and that is that as I see it, English public law is developing and has developed in the last 40 years, certainly since I've been involved, in quite a dramatic way. And it partly has been to do with historic political periods from the 1970s onwards. Now, I'm not going to make any further comment on that, but I think one has to see it in the historic context. So one has to have a, a little understanding, not just for legal history, but for general British history. Now, this is what we say about the book. Many will quite rightly say that it's high time we had a modern view on the relationship between the judiciary Parliament and the executive when the effectiveness of public law is reviewed. That is what we have here. Now Cambridge University Press have just published uh, a first class series of lectures which were created by Stephen Sedley and they offer practitioners and academics an important contribution 
to the contemporary development of modern public law as we recognise it today, some centuries after Francis Bacon's 1625 declaration that judges must be lions, but lions under the throne. And obviously that was written in a very different uh, social and political climate, and legal one for that matter. The book's about 300 pages long, got 14 chapters split into two parts, covering histories and themes. And they result from some 12 lectures which were delivered by Sedley several years ago. Um, do read the introductory chapter, not at the beginning. Uh, it sets the scene, I think, perfectly and gives us a useful definition of public law as, quote, the body of law embracing both administrative and constitutional law by which the state is regulated, both institutionally and in its dealings with individuals. And I think that's a very good definition. Sedley declares that the book does not cover such a large space, but is merely a series of test drillings into a land mass. Now, taking the imagery further, he states that the vertical drillings are thematic attempts to trace their topic from early days to the present, whilst the horizontal drillings, which are not sequential, take a stratum of time and examine developments in public law within it. And if you've understood that, which I have, you will see, taking the imagery to one side, that he's trying to give some idea of how public law has developed from the vertical and the horizontal. And they do love that at the moment, especially within the European Union, which we are going to be leaving shortly. Now, Sedley succeeds spectacularly here with his mission to give a 21st century commentary on public law almost 400 years after Bacon's original evaluation of the role of the judge during the dramatic constitutional reign of the Stuarts. Now, public law, as many lecturers know, is not necessarily an easy subject to teach and one which many students don't like. The same goes, as I said, for jurisprudence and legal theory. And an expansion of the role of public law in the last 50 years, and I think I'm being generous there, has made it a much more formidable and important substantive law area today, especially for counsel. Thus, the history of English law can be a great intellectual leveller for students. Selly reminds us that although practitioners in a common law system sometimes have to deploy historical material, such use, uh, such use tends to be goal-orientated and to lack content. He must have had some issues uh, with uh, precedence. However, mention of context and, dare we say it, the politics of judicial review itself will always be overriding features for all three power groups under the separation of the powers, as history does tend to repeat itself. And as I've said before, there is in fact, in my opinion, I would say submission, but it's an opinion here, there is a lot of politics in judicial review. And I think we're seeing, even with the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court acting in a more of a political way than it has done when it was in the House of Lords as a, as a, a committee, uh, where, where, of course, members of the House of Lords were also seeing the legislation at the same time as adjudicating, which they don't do now in quite the same way. Let me conclude by saying that the uh, final word can be left to the very basis of our system, the rule of law itself, covered right at the end of the book by Sedley when he reviews the work of Dicey. Now, he, Sedley describes the rule of law in this way as an elusive and protean concept which has no fixed meaning and he reminds us that it certainly no longer has the Anglo-centric self-assurance which its originator Dicey clothed it. Okay, that's um, a very straight statement, I think, uh, which one can see, um, of how from Professor Dice's period, Victorian England, things have markedly changed, more complex society, more intelligent, more well-educated society, different social trends and so on. So you can see that there has to be um, a change. But I do think it's worth bearing in mind what Dicey said. Now, 800 years then after the sealing of Magna Carta, Sedley suggests, rightly, 
Now, what this signals today, then, is, quote, a shared ideal that individuals and society should not be subject to the whim of the powerful, here, here. And that, and that, of course, is what these eminently readable essays are really all about, as valuable observations of where public law is in 2016. So thank you very much to Stephen Sedley. And let's just have a quick look at the book again. Those are the lions at the front, you can see. There is the spine, and then there is the back. And if we just open it in the middle, these are the lectures. This is about the royal prerogative. And it's going back into history there, quite, quite heavily. 1597, then to 1945, the Ram Doctrine. Then we go the separation of the powers, chapter 9. And as I've said, if you're looking for a first at Oxford or Cambridge or London or wherever university you're at, this is the sort of book you should read and refer to. You don't have to refer to much, but you can say, Sedley said something. I think one of the points is probably a commentary by Sedley as a recently retired judge on what Dicey said. It's just a suggestion. But it's certainly there if you're looking to enhance your overall classification. Anyway, thank you very much to Stephen Sedley and to Cambridge University Press. I found this book a great read and it's something I do think everybody who's doing an LLB should read. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye.